Hi guys, Shane here. Uh, thanks for watching. I made this video today, as I said, I was going to make it on Sunday, um, and I'm here. I probably ought to keep this video between about six and eight minutes as uh, the Arsenal match starts in about an hour. I want to go and watch that, so um, yeah, I'll, get, I'll jump straight into it. Um, if you're watching this, thank you again. Uh, please subscribe. Probably have some interesting things to talk about today. Um, stuff that I found interesting in the news, anyway. Um, so yeah, we'll kick off now. In Iraq, this is a story that just came out, um, I think it was today. Uh, I only heard it a couple of a couple of minutes ago. Anyway, and um, there was a suicide bomb attack. Another one. In it. It's fifty eight people died. I think were actual like school kids and a headmaster. Apparently, the suicide bomber dro drove up to the school and um, he had a truck packed with explosives, and he basically set it off outside the school. Or uh, yeah, uh, he drove up to the school and set it off, killing the fifteen students and uh, the headmaster. It, I think it was Al Qaeda. Um, it was, I think I read something about a Sunni Isma Islamist. Um, but like it's just it's 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 weird that it's still happening. It's like you know you have all this stuff in Libya now and um, Syria and you have all that and it's like sort of a rack. What's what's happening in the Middle East? You know, like it's just it's been break. I know it's been breaking out for years, but it's sort of it's got to this point now where it's just it's it's happening like it's just it's happening every day. Like these the people that live there have to deal with this stuff, and uh, we just don't, we just don't know how lucky we are here. Um, the village itself, it's home to about 200 people, so it's a small enough village, you know, um, it has a large Shiite population, that's uh, the Shiite and the Sunnis, obviously, is a big, uh, been big arguments, uh, more than arguments, obviously, killings, like, over the past few years, over that too, it's been very, uh, very, uh, a very high tension in that area, you know, um, same with India, you have Pakistan and India, and um, all the border of the, uh, the Kashmir border. And it's just there's always a lot of violence in uh, in that in them areas. But uh, yeah, it is very it is very sad to see it's still happening. And uh, I just thought I'd tell you just to uh, let you know basically that it did happen. That fifteen people did die, fifteen school kids. You know that's that's even worse. And um, yeah, so another thing I found interesting in the news today. My second story is um, the UN have started destroying the uh, chemical weapons in Syria. As you probably know, in Syria, um, a couple of I think it was last month. The Syrian government are setting off gas uh, chemical attacks on the uh, the rebels, and um, America. There was big big talk of America uh, attacking Syria and uh, missile strikes and that, and a possible invasion. And um, there was also talk of World War Three, which was pretty frightening for a while. And um, apparently, the Russians didn't want the Americans attacking, as they said they didn't have enough sufficient evidence to attack. And then um, basically the UN then said, uh, no, you're not attacking them unless we find proof that they have chemical weapons, then nothing will happen. And obviously they found chemical weapons, but the, um, the Syrian government decided to hand them over. And basically now it's being, the chemical weapons are being destroyed. And what happens next will be will be very interesting to see. Um, I, I'm going to be very keen on this story, so um, in my, most of my videos I'll be talking about that a lot. And um, it's a story I want to follow up on, it's a story I want to talk about a bit. Uh, yeah, so I think it is. I think if they they did use chemical weapons, uh, there was word that chemical weapons weren't used, and it was just a hoax used by um, the rebels to, for the government for the Americans to come in and attack. And uh, I do believe that the uh, chemical weapons were used, and I think this is a solution now that they're getting um, they're getting destroyed, and no no more no more lives, and so many lives being taken at the moment in the Middle East, and no more will be taken. America won't have to possibly go to another war. You know they're already stuck in that war in Iraq, and it, that doesn't look like it's gonna. A, like ease up anytime soon. Even though they said they were going to be leaving in in, in a year, I don't think I don't see that happening. I don't see Obama pulling out. But then again, I could be wrong. This could uh, it could all change. You know, you know the way the world's going. It could change in day, change in a week. And yeah, so that's that story. Another story I found interesting was if you listen, it's a, it's a home story. It's a big jump from a uh, war and stuff. But um, if you if you're interested, if you're from Dublin and you're watching this, you might know that um there was there's a radio pro uh, sorry excuse me radio program called the FM 104 Phone Show. Um, the two presenters of Adrian Kennedy and Jeremy Dixon, they have been presenting it for the past 16 years and they took over from a man called Chris Barry. Now Chris Barry is back on the phone show, he's uh, doing, he's currently uh, presenting as, a, a, as of today, well it's, uh, it's uh, Sunday today so he's obviously not doing it today but um, he is taking over from Adrian and Jeremy and there was big big um, big talk of this because no one, no one uh, knew about it, now I did know about it because, um, oh sorry I, I keep thinking of something at my door. I am um, I I kept up to date with this. You see, I do a journalism course at school and uh, or sorry college, 
and we were talking about this I think someone brought up the we were asked like what's your favourite radio programme someone said the FM 104 phone show and then we got into this conversation about um, that Adrian and Jeremy could be leaving I went home and further researched this and I found out that uh, Adrian and Jeremy are on the way to 98 FM they will be doing a midday slot I think it's I think I read like 3 or sorry 12 to 3 obviously Dermot and Dave is on for 3 to uh, 7 I think um, but yeah that's their new slot um, I was think to myself like what were the reasons for him leaving like why why would they leave so without having even a goodbye show because apparently the last show they did when they they got a phone call basically saying that was their last show and um, I find this very strange because usually when um when there's when a long term host or hosts are gone um it's there's always a goodbye show there's always a way that, so they could say goodbye to their fans there's always a way that they maybe they say what they'd be doing in the future so the fans could keep up to date but in this case there wasn't they um they just left and the last phone show they didn't even know it was the last um the last phone show there's actually there's a good um a good video on youtube I'll, I'll link it in the description it's the last ever get it off your chest and it's just any other get it off your chest but if you look back at it now you realize that like it's their last show and if they did if they last show, what would they have done differently that's what i find interesting what would they have done would they have like um made it longer what would they have done but um yeah the the question that i ask myself is um Will Chris be as successful as Adrian Kennedy and Jeremy Dixon? I definitely do not think he'll be half as successful, even though he was the original host of it. I seriously don't think it's just Adrian and Jeremy for the past few years. They've been raking in awards. They've been getting forty thousand plus listeners a night. You know they've been doing absolutely brilliantly for FM One Hundred and Four. For FM One Hundred and Four to let them go that that easy to go to ninety eight FM, it's it's really it's it's really hard to grasp because he was the, their best a asset of two FM 104 without a doubt Adrian and Jeremy were the best combination in radio that we've probably seen an Irish radio that we've seen in years and they were funny they were interesting they uh, they always had good topics there was some interesting really interesting topics they brought up they brought up a lot of serious but like they could jump from a really serious topic like abortion to a really joke topic like um, how many times you have sex in a week it's that it's like they jump from nothing and it, they can do it so easily and transition so easily from so, so serious to a big joke and it's just it's done with such grace that like and it's so funny and interesting they, they keep it like that all the time and um, actually recently um, they did win an award for a Halloween show they did last year now the Halloween show if any of you listen to it I'm pretty sure most of you do if you're from Dublin the Halloween show um, basically they, went, they go to a, um, a surprise location like no one knows what it is only them they go to it and they do a lot of tasks and um, I think listeners ring up and tell them what to do and they do it but um, last year Jeremy Dixon got in a grave an actual proper grave and was the uh, coffin was put and he had the lighter and apparently he was feeling all this supernatural presence obviously there was no supernatural presence but the way they did it it sort of they made it it was so interesting to listen to it, it was, I was listening to it myself and it was just you were intrigued like you keep, kept wanting to go on and on and on and I suppose every show they was like that and to just leave, it's it's weird. They didn't even get a good boy show. That's what I find like, that's what I find weird. So the question I wanted to ask you today was, you the, you the viewers, um, do you think that Chris Barry can be as successful as Adrian Kennedy and Jeremy Dixon were? Um, leave your answers in the comments below. I'll reply to them. And if there's any interesting comments, then I'll um, make sure to to answer them in the in the next video, maybe. So yeah, um, I'm already ten minutes into my video. <laughs> we'll go on to uh, sport now. And um, now what I do, I just want to give you a quick rundown. What I do in sport is I pick out three stories that I found very interesting. Two, or maybe two, st two stories this week that I found very interesting during the week. So um, that's what I do every week, and it won't be like breaking news. It could be breaking a breaking news story of big news, like a transfer or something. But mostly it will be the two stories that are two or three stories that I found very interesting during the week. And um, my first, my first story is that um, so we're on to sport. Yeah, my first story is um, Zlatan Ibrahimovic uh, publicly said that he wants Wayne Rooney to join him at PSG. What I found interesting about this topic was that there's already four. Yeah, my first story is um, Zlatan Ibrahimovic uh, publicly said that he wants Wayne Rooney to join him at PSG. What I found interesting about this topic was that there's already four strikers if you count Gamero at PSG. There's um, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, just Cavani, and there's Gamero. Sorry, three strikers before Rooney joined. Um, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Edison Cavani and Kevin Gamero. Um, now Zlatan Ibrahimovic, as you all probably know, is um, a very topical character, he's, he's controversial. 
and uh, he, he always wants to be the standout performer. But since Giovanni joined PSG, he there, there even was talk of him arguing about Cavani joining PSG. Like he didn't want it, he didn't want Cavani to join PSG because he thought to himself then he wouldn't be the um, the standout striker. But like for him to come out and say that Wayne Rooney, he wants Wayne Rooney to join PSG now, another absolutely outstanding striker to join PSG. It's it's very weird. It's quite on his behalf. Like you wouldn't expect that from um, Stephen Ibrahimovic. He'd be more likely to say like, uh, I don't want Wayne Rooney to join. If Wayne Rooney joins, I'll leave. He'd be more likely to say that. But it's an interesting day because is this sort of saying? It was interesting to me because I thought it showed a different side to Ibrahimovic. It showed a side that sort of. He wants coaching now, he wants to prove that he's the best player. He wants to make people like know that he's the best player. And no matter how many good strikers join, Cavani, Rooney, he'll still be the main brilliant striker at um, PSG and nobody will nobody will um sort of match him. But I think if Rooney did join PSG, I think that he would be playing better than Ibrahim Vijay. I'll tell you why. I think Rooney and, and uh, Cavani are would be the best partnership in football that we that we'll see if, if they join. If Rooney joins PSG next season, Cavani and Rooney will be the best partnership. They just they play very, very alike and I think they play off each other very well. I could be wrong if I'm wrong. You can argue with me in the comments, but that's what I think. And I think Satan Ibrahimovic will be sort of shadowed. But um it sort of makes me think like he's come out all, all this saying before, like he doesn't want yeah at, at Barcelona for example, he always he, he always wanted to be playing ahead of Messi like and he, he always got big arguments with Pep Guardiola about where Messi played him. He wanted to play as the main striker, but Pep Guardiola wanted Messi. And it was just, it was sort of all about Zlatan. But now he's wanted more people to talk. I think basically what he's doing is, he wants to, he wants all these good strikers to come in, and so he can prove that he gets, he can play better than these strikers, and undoubtedly be the best striker in the world. I think that this will backfire on him. I think that, by saying that, he's sort of, he's set, he's setting there the PSG boss up, the boy Rooney, and then um, Rooney will come in and I think will um, outshadow Ibrahimovic and, uh, with Cavani. And Ibrahimovic just will back for an Ibrahimovic. But it doesn't really matter. Because at the end of the day, if he does, Ibrahimovic will just move to a new club. That's what he does. But I do think that Ibrahimovic, this is a bad move for him to say if he wants to continue being the number one, <laughs> excuse me, the number one striker at PSG. Uh, yeah, so that's basically that story. That's what I thought about that story. That's why I thought it was interesting. It's sort of, it's a different side to Ibrahimovic that we've seen. Uh, another story I found interesting this week was, uh, and the last story, is Wiltshire. Um, Jack Wiltshire, as you know, during the week he was spotted outside of the club smoking. Now, um, I think this story was blown completely out of proportion. Completely out of proportion. The guy has a puff of smoke, right? That's what was pictured. It was pictured of him having a puff of smoke, okay? Now, he was at a party. Like, he's not, he's not addicted to smokes. He's not on the smokes. He had a puff of a smoke. We all do. We all have a puff of a smoke. There is an argument that, okay, he's a professional footballer. He shouldn't be smoking at all. It's bad for him. But one puff of a smoke, it's not going to make a difference. Now, to be honest, it will not make a difference at all. But for him to get like left out, if he will be getting left out of the game, I'm not sure. I haven't seen the squad yet. But if he is going to be left out of the game against West Brom today, um, I think that is the only thing that should happen to him. I don't think he should be fined. I don't think he should go any further. I think it should just stop there. He should be left out of the squad if if this is what's like. I don't think he should. I think it's completely complete bollocks if you if you ask me that he's being left. He that anything is happening. I know that's oh it's a bad bad for for younger fans or whatever or you know it could affect us. But it's not. The truth is it's not. It's just sort of a PR thing. That's all it is. That's all it, it always is. And uh, I think that Wilshire himself he keeps himself healthy. He keeps himself very good. He plays brilliantly. Best young player I've seen. Um, that's a very controversial statement again, but he is the best young player I've seen. Um, yeah, he has his ups and downs, but every player does. But come on, like one puff of smoke, if if that, you know, even if he had like a smoke itself, like it's not gonna, it's not gonna make a difference. Let's be honest. And what's happening is it's being blown completely out of proportion, and it's just it's it's not right. Basically, it's making him feel bad, and even though he shouldn't feel bad. And it's just, it's all this, all this crap, all this, like, oh, you know, he's making a bad name for the club. And it's not. He's had a smoke, big deal. Get over it. And that's what I think. Anyway, if you disagree with me, leave in the comments below. And um, my pick of the day for the match, for uh, the match today is Arsenal and West Brom, obviously. And I am Shane Carter. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.